Hello, everybody, and welcome to HTC Invitational. I'm your host, Nimsh, and I'm joined here by my co-host, Monk. We've just seen Forsen defeat Colento and advance to the top four. Right now, we'll have Tice versus Hyped. Monk, who are those guys? At Tice, of course, he's done very well throughout the history of Hearthstone. He's probably like the first player who's made it just by winning open bracket tournaments. Of course, back in the beta, or yeah, back in the beta, he was winning a lot of open bracket Zotac Cups. He advanced uh, through, he won like four or five of them in a row. He got invited to... Um, to King of the, the Hill? I, yeah, I heard you, King of the Hill. He won 10 in a row. And from then on, his fame just grew and grew to what he is right now. And Team Nihilum being a world-class Hearthstone player. Oh, yeah. And uh, he is the DreamHack Booker's winner. And then he almost became a back-to-back -back DreamHack winner where he got to the, to the final of uh, DreamHack Winter, I believe. Uh, losing to Corlento in the final. So an excellent player, uh, showing excellent skills in tournaments um, and on ladder as well. Uh, but then his opponent is Hyped, who is um, any ladder god, I believe, right? Yeah, he reached. He was the top finisher in terms of BlizzCon points last year for the North American region. But unfortunately, that success hasn't really translated to the tournament scene. He hasn't really won too many tournaments. There was a Chinese tournament that he got second place in, but that's pretty much as far as he's ever gotten. And I think one big criticism about Hyped is that he only plays a certain amount of decks. He only pretty much plays Rogue, Hunter, Mage, and Druid. And he's fairly limited in that sense. That being said, in this tournament, he's decided to change it up a lot. He's brought uh, a Control Warrior, which a deck that we haven't really seen from him at all. And he's also brought a uh, Handlock, uh, a deck that he said himself he's not that strong with Handlock. Uh, but he, he certainly probably practiced it a lot, being that he decided to bring it today. Well, I heard he actually traveled to China to practice uh, playing handlock in China. So he practiced, you know, with all the Chinese players to increase his handlock skills. So now, back in NA, uh, he might be one of the best handlock players in the world. But Monk, tell me, we have a giveaway for our viewers. What do you have to do to enter the giveaway? Yeah, it's a very simple giveaway. All you have to do is tweet with the hashtag HTC Esports and can win some pretty awesome swag, I'd say. One of 12 team t-shirts by either TSM, Cloud9, or Team Liquid. One of two HTC tablets or even an awesome HTC smartphone. Oh man, that's amazing. And uh, I want to remind everyone that you can actually play Hearthstone on your phone. There is an amazing uh, overlay, an amazing um, user interface that, uh, that was designed by Blizzard. It's pretty cool, just you know, playing Hearthstone on the way, uh, on the bus, um, whatever, actually. And um, it's pretty useful. So we're going to jump into the game. Both players are ready. Hyped versus Tice. Game number one, Hunter versus Mage. It's going to be uh, definitely the Hybrid Hunter from Tice. I believe this is actually the exact list that Protohyped got to rank 1 Legend with a few days ago versus a fairly standard Mech Mage from Hyped. Actually, now that I think of it, it might not be that standard because we know this Mech Mage, it has kind of four tech cards. It has two Harvest Golems instead of uh, in addition to Spider Tanks. And it also has a Blinktron 3000 and a Harrison Jones. So we all haven't three seen cards. Blinkstron yesterday, but yeah. it is highly possible that he is running one. Maybe even Water Elementals. Yeah, um, I don't believe his standard Mech Mage deck runs Water Elementals, but his standard deck runs Blinktron 3000. I've seen it so much in all the tournaments that he's entered. The Xfinity Cup, the um, the King Win Pro League. Well, there we say, see it yeah, right now. Blinktron 3000 goes into Hype's hand. Uh, he's also running Lothab, which um, might be important, you know, Lothab being played on those key turns when Hunter just wants to finish you with the spells. You play that Lothab, you push with damage, Hunter is not able to kill you, and then you kill Hunter next turn. So Lothab, I've seen Lothab winning so many games, and um, he is playing uh, playing it even though it's not a standard card. Alright, so here, what do you say about the opening from, um, from Tice? Is this opening hand good, bad? It seems clunky with so many spells. Yeah, you definitely don't want the two kill commands in your opening hand, but at least Tice has a way to deal with this Mad Scientist and to deal with the Mirror Entity that will come off the Mad Scientist. So at least that's something he has going for him. So right now he needs to deal with the Spider Tank, I believe. Like You don't want to face a Blast Mage on 4 um, being activated. A possible kill command uh, uses removal. It's not terrible. 
um, developing Eagle Hornbow on three and going into two, um, just attacking the uh, the three four, also killing it with the minion. Possibly, if you go for, you can also go for juggler. Like go for juggler, buff the spider, and then attack the the spider tank and hope that one knife will hit. One of three knives will actually hit the spider tank. I think he might actually go for it. Yeah, I believe uh, in this. Quite a, quite a risky go ahead. Play. Yeah, quite a risky play, but like you said, he really wants to, uh, he values killing off this mech a lot because of that Goblin Blast Mage turn. And there's like so many ways to deal with it. Um, like you suggested, Kill Command is an option, Eagle Horn Bow was also an option, and um, Abusive Sergeant plus Knife Juggler was kind of the third option. But this uh, this play, he gives up the board, in, or he gets the board control entirely. So any uh, Goblin Blast Mage turns, will be a, a very much weakened. Unfortunately for him though, the weakness of this play is that he gives up the um, gives up the abusive sergeant. So now hyped or now Tice will have to play like, like a knife, knife juggler into this mirror entity. Yeah, that's certainly true. But then um, if he plays knife juggler because of pilot the shredder, he will be able to trade it easily uh, with uh, the abusive sergeant. But is it is it what you want to do? Because right now you can also go for Eagle Horbo to deal with the 4 free. It's not that mana efficient. You definitely not go for Pilot Shredder. You will not be able to play it. You don't want to give your opponent a second one. Again, a lot of options actually. Yeah, a lot uh, of the problem the problem I have with just uh, throwing down the Eagle Horn Bow is if you just look at the hand right now, uh, going into turn five, what is Tice doing if he just Eagle Horn Bowing this turn? He's going to have 5 mana, so I would say maybe a Knife Juggler into Quick Shot, but that actually floats a mana yet again. Also, if there is a 4 Toughness minion, um, that, that will pose a problem. Like Even a simple Mistress, uh, Mistress of Pain, a 1-4, would contest this board. And you know what? Tice did not play around Blinktron 3000 here. His weapon is going to get overwritten. Yeah, but maybe he'll get something better. And he's not. Up. All right, so Blinktron is going to see play. What weapons are we going to witness? Uh, did you hear the story that actually Blizzard meant for Blinktron not to be a competitive card? Oh my god. Look at that. Oh, okay. Poor Hal from Hyped. That's amazing. That's an amazing card when you go for minion trading. The Kong Hammer is okay, but it's not as good as Gorhal. Well, you know what? Against a hunter player um, that is trying to fight for board control, that Gorhau will probably be a seven for one. Yeah, and I, I don't believe Tys is playing any weapon removal here, so this Gorhau is going to remain the problem for the next couple of turns. And that, there's still Mirror Entity. What are you going to do, Tys? Well, he'd somewhat deal with the Mirror Entity here by just um, throwing down a knife juggler. And just killing it off with his weapon. That seems okay. Then you can uh, fill the rest of your mana off with probably the Wolf Rider. And then the real question is, do you actually use, want to use the Wolf Rider to trade? Or do you want to use it to go for base? Well, Blinktron is a mech. So if you're playing around that um, last mage, you should continue to do so. So the knife kind of misses. Um... Oh man. So I think this play is because, first of all, he has the kill command and quick shot in his hand, so he has a lot of burst. And second of all, he sees his opponent has a gore howl, so he knows probably in the long game he can't. Yeah, I agree. Like, in the long game, he won't be able to just win the board, uh, especially because of that gore howl, so he has to apply the face strategy. Also, looking at the Tyson's deck, just having those charge minions. Uh, we haven't seen the high mains. He's probably running the hybrid. Uh, if I remember correctly, yesterday he was playing the high mains. But uh, right here, going for face was the correct decision. Even though there is the Tanoyan trying to stop him, there is the freezing trap for Thais, but it's looking really bad. He already used one kill command as well.
Alright, so just getting the pilot shredder, trying to set up something at least. But then, strange enough, this will allow um, Hype to get... Uh, Alright, so he's, he's going to attack with Neutron. I was thinking maybe attack with Blast Mage to get it back to hand and uh, replay it, but 5 damage to face is obviously better. Especially now when he has the lethal with the Goho and the Frostbolt. So Hype taking game number one versus Dice. And um, locking his Mech Mage. So Mech Mage getting that win. Uh, he won't have to use it anymore. He still has the Warlock. He still has the, the Warrior. And um, apparently we, we lost Monk. Monk, are you there? I'm back. Better than All ever. Right. Monk is back. All right, so, so what, what happened in the previous game? So um, you've missed the kill. Uh, Hype basically finished uh, ties with uh, Gorhal, Frostbolt, and minions um, attacking uh, to face. That's pretty awesome. You know, Gorhal, it's actually really good against minions because they can get a lot of value. But you know what? It's also a weapon that can go for face. As yeah. some orc Gorhal. I, um, yeah. I totally missed that at some point because I was thinking like maybe just attack with Blast Mage and um, replay it to, for, for some value, but he actually had lethal, so... Uh, kind of distressed by the fact that you you left me left me monk. I was alone for a moment. Oh, oh no! But you know oh, what? Look at least at that. Uh... Oh man! Do you see, do you see is... the dragon? Do you see the dragon? Yeah, we all love dragons, and fortunately, this is one of the few viable dragon decks in the meta right now. Pretty much this deck, the Dragon Warrior and the Dragon Warlock, uh, seem to be the two dragon decks that are kind of sticking right now. All right, so game number two, Hype versus Thais, is right here with the Nefarian looking at us. And uh, I'm kind of sad that this is not a golden Nefarian. Have you seen the golden Nefarian animation? Uh, I have not, but I know like the Alexstrasza animation, the Alexstrasza golden animation is one of the best. So I can definitely imagine Nefarian's animation would be pretty cool as well. It's amazing, especially when you are running a golden garage. They com they are It's like they are combined together because he's breathing, breathing out fire. And uh, Garage is standing in the fire. So it's like being bathing in the fire from the fire end. There's a lot of prerequisites there, Nimsh. First of all, you have to be a very avid warrior player, have 500 warrior wins. And second of all, you have to have enough dust to craft uh, Nefarian. And unfortunately, I don't, follow, I don't fall into either of those categories. I'm close, though. I have about 400 wins on warrior. You can always be lucky and you open the golden Nefarian. Uh, you can't, though. Because it's a, it's a Black Rock Mountain. Oh, card. you're right. You're right. You have to cl you have to craft it. Oh man. Okay. By the way, uh, it, did Tice change the deck? Like before, he was playing Wolf Riders and you know face cards, and now he's running Lothab and High Main. What is happening here? Well, like like I've said before, this is the prototype proto hype mid range hybrid hunter. So it's kind of like a combination between the face hunter and the mid-range hunter it kind of gets like the best parts of both decks it has face damage and then it just adds high mains at the end just to um just just be more annoying or you can kind of look at it the other way around it's kind of a mid-range hunter but it has some burst at the end with wolf riders and arcane golems prototypes prototype of the mid-range hunter i like it i see what you did there <laughs> Okay, and um, we can also assume that uh, Hyped is running the Fib Fibonacci's uh, Dragon Warrior, possibly. Uh, or maybe his own build, but uh, the original build from Fib Fibonacci had, what, like three dragons? Uh, Nefarian, Alexstrasza, Isera, and then it was running double Blackwing Raptor that we see right now. Uh, being um, a tall strider, a blank, but if there is a dragon being drawn by turn five or even six, it's an amazing card. Well, you mentioned Fibonacci's decklist, but uh, you forgot the key card in that decklist, which is actually Deathwing. He runs yes. Deathwing and Control Warrior. Imagine that. I don't I think, think a lot of anyone people... else. Yeah, I don't think anyone else is willing to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Like people play his list, but they cut Deathwing and they play something else. It's like he, he was running Deathwing instead of Isera, and people cut Deathwing and play Isera instead. Maybe. I don't know. All right. Here still for Tice, a turn four play, pilot the shredder. There is a bear as well. Uh, looking good for now. A pretty good curve. Lothab into Savannah High Main is never bad. Hyped has yeah, exactly. the, the depth spite. Yeah, this is kind of exactly what mid-range mid Hunter does in order to win the game. 
the battle between Control Warrior and Midrange Hunter is basically can the Control Warrior set up a good board on turn 5 so that it can deal with the turn 6 high main. The whole game kind of revolves around that and unfortunately for Hyped, um, Tice pretty much has everything he needs in order to curve out well into the high main to ensure basically that Hyped can answer the high main efficiently. On the other hand, Hyped has that death spite, so he was able to, to deal with Lothar, that's, like, that's why um, Tais got for a second pilot shredder. Again, an amazing card creating minions, but here uh, Hyped will be able to deal with, with stuff, like he can attack one of those um, pilot shredders, he can even go with the Armorsmith, uh, Armorsmith first to get some, some health back, kill one, kill the other, um, maybe with minion attack. Maybe it's time to execute, even though I don't really like executing that early because you know you are going to face those high mains eventually. Um, even so, like he he has Sylvanas, he has the Brawl, so he has the means to deal with the big creatures. Yeah, I think at this point, Hyped, he has to assume that his opponent is going to play a Savannah high main on turn 6. And he's thinking, how can I best deal with that high main? And I think um, he might, setting up a Brawl might be likely. Or um, use saving the execute this turn in order for that uh, high main to come into effect might also be possible. Hyped making the correct decision, uh, attacking the correct uh, pilot shredder, so that nice. um, the whirlwind effect goes off. And now, if he, if there is another small minion that the taskmaster can deal with, oh, there is a free two. So hype just clearing the board and getting some health in the process. A, a very nice um, response to what just happened. To so do slum be, uh, high main. Is there is there a reason yeah, to not slum high main? You know, we kind of joke about Dr. Boom being played all the time on turn 7. But I think high main is like an, almost an easier uh, turn 6 play. I would yeah. even argue that high main might be better than Dr. Boom. On turn 6? Or is yeah, like six. overall? Was like the, Over, um, overall, yeah. Overall. overall okay. Yeah, um, Sylvanas uh, Windrunner will come down, but fortunately for Tice, he does have the answer, and it's actually one of the only answers um, in Tice's deck for this uh, Sylvanas. He also has a Glaive Zuka, but I might hesitate to use it, because if he uses it, then he might put the his high own high main into BGH range. Tice also has a Freezing Trap, so Freezing Trap might have been better here, but... Um, just Iron Beak is amazing as well. And what he can do maybe is even... It's like the question how much you want to push uh, damage versus Warrior. You know the Warrior can get some heals. Uh, you know there is a possibility of Alexstrasza. So at this moment, Tys has to decide, am I getting into a board control fight or am I going for face? If he's going for face, he has to silence Alexstrasza. And if he goes for the silence, what are, what are the other cards he's going to play? Lothab? Maybe... Maybe, but then Sylvanas is going to trade into Lothab, but Hyman is going to be uncontested. If you play more minions, if you play like Iron Beak and Lothab, are you um, afraid of, of Brawl? So, there is all those, all those questions you have to ask yourself. Well, if you play Lothab, you're not afraid of Brawl this turn at least. So, you can go for phase with, uh, with Hyman and set up a very dangerous life total for Hype. Yeah, I definitely like that play. Just shutting out uh, everything uh, possibly from the warrior player. He can play any spells, which are exactly what he needs uh, in order to stabilize in this game. He needs to execute, he needs to brawl, he needs to even shield slam, but he can't do any of that. Um, so so both of is really brilliant. Is there a way for Hype to not lose next turn? Uh, if he trades w with the 5-5 five five with Savannah's, executes the high main, he'll be six points of damage. And uh, upcoming from, from ties, there is what, like... Eight points of damage anyway, right? Yeah, so he'll, he'll be able to gain a lot of armor from here. In fact, six armor, so he'll go up to 18 HP, and that's um, definitely enough for him to survive in the next turn, unless, I guess, a kill command is drawn. Um, is Ty's one of lethal? With Glaive Zuka, that's uh, plus three, so it's nine. Uh, with uh, There's seven. two off lethal, I believe. Fifteen, yep. So he has 10 damage in hand and 6 on the board. So that's 2 off. You know what? It's still before the uh, key Alexstrasza turn. So you might just go for full face here. 
But at the same time, these armor are smith. quite a... Yeah, double armor smith just means there's so much potential for Hype to get a lot of armor. So I might even consider p perhaps even clearing off one of the armor smiths at least with a Glaive Zuka. But again, we run into the problem. If you use Glaive Zuka here, um, you might get a run your high main into BGH range. So of course, Tice will go for uh, the Wolf Rider first. And he buffs the correct minion, actually. Yeah, so he might actually go for both Armorsmiths here. But even attacking the Armorsmith is costing, um, is giving uh, health to, to Hyped. Alright, so kind of like a board clear, uh, not full board clear, but getting those Armorsmiths out of the way. And now, is this the Brawl turn? Or do you do something else? Like, you can execute and Brawl. Draw a card in the process, and you can still our shield block after that if you want to. So worst case scenario is, I guess, the Wolf Rider survives what now? the brawl, and then you're looking at eight damage to your face, and you're going to be sitting at 13 HP after armoring up this turn. Yeah, but the upside is that you are drawing one card from Acolyte of Pain at least. Yeah. The problem is that Acolyte is not going to survive. But yeah, just attack, attacking here, execute, brawl, hope that a hy uh, hyena survives. Oh, you know what? Yeah, he can actually even get rid of the hyena if uh, one of those survives. Yeah, deny the beast. You do have to brawl here, right? Yeah, Hyped might also be considering going for the shield block, fit, trying to fit that in. And he actually can with... Um, I guess it, it really depends on what survives here. If it's a hyena, then you can decide to axe it. But if it's um, if it's one of the four ones, maybe shield block is best just to get as much armor as possible. And it oh, is going to be one of the four ones. Five. Wow! Look at the Alexstrasza. Yeah, it's definitely like the key card that he wants to see. But you know what? Um, he can actually just Blackwing Corruptor and Sludge Belcher in the next turn. Let's see how much damage he has remaining. Yeah, Alexstrasza was important uh, for two reasons. It's a dragon and it also provides some health. There is one card. Oh, he played the secret. So now uh, Hype knows that there is the only possibility to die here. Geddon, wow. So the possibility to die here would be, what, a quick shot into something, right? Um, or, or a kill command. Kill and command, you know what? If you, the thing is, if you Alexstrasza here, you know this is a freezing trap, so it'll just get bounced back. And Alexstrasza, it'll heal you for 8 HP, whereas if you just Sludge Belcher and Blackwing Corruptor, I think that's kind of equivalent. Also, if Hyped knows this deck well enough, he knows that there's only one Iron Beak Owl in the deck, and he's already seen that Iron Beak Owl, so he's probably yeah. going to feel pretty safe with the Sludge Belcher. I think it's better to just play the Sludge Belcher and Corruptor because you are um, maybe you can die to, to like two top decks, two cards that are killing you, or maybe three cards that are killing you. But then you still have better chances than, than just playing Alexstrasza, which is not really doing much. I just yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you, you die to the same things anyway. You die to yeah. kill command, um, and you die to a quick shot into something else. And this even saves you from dying a quick shot plus an Eagle Horn Bow, for instance. Now the question is though, if you play Corruptor, what do you kill? Do you kill the 4-1 or do you kill the Juggler? What represents more damage? I, I believe Juggler is representing more because of the Hunter Creeper on board. Yeah, not only that, I guess the Juggler has potential. Oh, oh my god. He actually top deck kill command. It's the same thing as he was playing versus Ecop. He also top deck kill command to kill. Uh, here though, that was a much more um, difficult possession because Hype just needed this one more turn to escape the range of kill command and quick shots. So Ty's going to take game number two and tie the series versus hyped. Ties of ties. No, he's he's not tied to time yet. He hasn't gone to that level yet, I guess. But you know what? That hunter deck, it, it might seem like it uh, relies on top decks, but you know, that's kind of the nature of Hunter. It kind of tries to throw its hand out as quickly as possible to get as much tempo early on to the game and also as much face damage onto your opponent in the early parts of the game. And at the end, you do rely on top decks 
but you know what? Those top decks are fairly consistent. There's just so many cards in the Hunter deck that can reliably deal damage to your opponent's face. Yeah, yeah, I certainly agree. So, um, pretty well played there, and uh, we're going to jump into game number three, Hyped versus Tice. Let's see what is going to happen. So, again, the Dragon Control Warrior versus Handlock this time. Yeah, and very interesting Dragon Warrior this is because um, it runs Emperor Thorzen and also it runs uh, Baron Geddon, which are two cards I actually don't typically see that much from Dragon Warrior. And I'm just kind of curious as to what hyped cut in order to fit those in. There's just so many cards you want to fit into Control Warrior these days. So many tech cards like the Emperor, like the uh, Baron Geddon, that it's kind of hard to fit everything in. But it's going to be a pretty any... interesting matchup. We haven't seen any Shield Slams. Do you think he actually oh. cut Shield Slams? Um, you if seen... you're running Shield Block, I, I, I can't imagine that he's cutting Shield Slams. Maybe he cut Humash. Um, it's not a dragon. <laughs> that's true. Um, I guess... Ragnaros, yeah, for I sure. Can't... Yeah, he definitely cut Ragnaros. That's kind of like an obvious cut. But perhaps something like um, Harrison Jones is another obvious cut. R&B Gal, a lot of players don't... Uh, play that as often. No Lothab. Yeah, no Lothab. That's not a very common card these days. But let's talk about this matchup, actually. The Handlock versus Dragon Warrior. And I think typically the Handlock has sort of an advantage over a normal warrior. But I think the Dragon decks actually give it a little bit of an extra oomph. Because you have the Nefarian, which actually... The, the Nefarian actually has like a 1 in 20 chance of just winning the game outright with the uh, possibly getting a sacrificial pact, right? So let's go for the, like how this matchup normally works. Um, how it works is that Handlock wants to play uh, big minions as, as fast as possible. So we want to play Twilight Dragon 4, we want to play Mountain Giants, and you want to contest the board with those big guys and, uh, and see if Warrior has removal. If Warrior has execute, if Warrior has enough armor to shield slam those minions, then the, the game is going to go back and forth where Handlock is putting those big minions on board, and Warrior is trying to respond to them. If Warrior lacks removal, then those big minions are going to overrun Warrior. Um, the other strategy is that if Warrior has initiative, if Warrior is the one trying to put them damage and just get a Warlock a very low, to force Molten Giants, Warlock is forced to play those Molten Giants, and then the Brawl is being played, and Molten Giants might, might get removed. So there's a couple of scenarios, but overall, just Handlock has a big advantage because... Um, he just plays those cards, those big dudes, and um, they are better. They're better value than normal warrior minions. And um, here with um, uh, those dragons, as you mentioned, it's possible that if the game goes back and forth, then warrior will have more endgame cards. Like put that Isera, put the fire on the board, um, use those Blackwing Corruptors uh, to his advantage, and, and maybe then the game will be you know equal at 50 50. Yeah, exactly. Um... The, the extra Dragon Snipper and Yasera kind of give the Dragon Warrior kind of a little bit of extra that he wouldn't have he wouldn't have had otherwise. Now the, the way I usually see this matchup go is um, you actually need two things from the Warrior in order to win the matchup. You need the removals early on and you also need good Acolytes of Pain because um, a lot of the times you don't win or you rather you don't lose because you can't deal with your opponent's threats but rather you lose because you just ran out of cards because you can't keep up with the Warlock hero power. Yeah, true. So, having said all that, looking at those situa uh, the situation right now, uh, Hyped does have the BGH that he just picked up. He has the Brawl, he has Sylvanas, Shield Slam, a lot of good cards to, to tend to the board. He is lacking... Like, five cards is not much looking at what Warlock has because Tice, at this moment, after tapping and playing Giant, he will have a lot of cards in hand. And... Uh, can hype keep up with all that? It's Twilight Trick uh, as well as Tice is everything I would like to have in this matchup. Yeah, but at the same time, Hyped has a really good hand as well. He hasn't gotten his Acolyte, but he's drawn four of his big removals. He has BGH, he already used an Execute, he drew the second Execute, and he also drew a Shield Slam. Which is perfect. What do you think about using Shield Slam here instead of BGH? I think it's actually something uh, to, uh, that you can definitely consider because BGH you can use any time to kill a giant, but the 
Field Slam, you might not have armor later on to the game. However, um, your opponent might not have giants later into the game. He might not draw into a second mountain giant. And the big game hunter isn't as versatile. It can't deal with Twilight Drakes, for instance. So definitely, like, you have to weigh the pros and cons of each option. Yeah, I also like playing BGH here. Um, you will have to consider what you want to do with the 4-5, because in case of Shadow Flame, you might end up in a weird position. Yeah. Oh, he's this going for Sylvanas. Yeah, this is the play that I've seen quite a bit from uh, a lot of Warrior players in this matchup, just throwing the Sylvanas on the board, forcing your opponent into an no awkward situation where he has to deal with it. It, it he If he has the RNB Gal, then okay, whatever, I can deal with... Uh, I, I can still deal with the Mountain Giant in another way. The big issue here is if he actually has a Shadow Flame, because the Shadow Flame will kind of wreck this board at the moment. Uh, what about Iron Beak? You can go, hmm. I'm thinking if there's like a way to buff your minion uh, to have a good Iron Beak and then uh, Shadow Flame for five. But not really this turn. Something else I want to note is that actually handlocks have been getting less greedy lately. We've even seen some handlock lists that uh, they so cut Ragnaros, they don't have Jaraxxus, they don't have Melganus. Instead, they're running more of like two Dark Bombs, two Hellfires, even two Shadow Flames. Just a lot of AoEs in order to deal with patrons, in order to be good in that matchup. So if the handlock is actually running low on threats, then the Warrior with the Acera and the Nefarian, he might be an advantage if the game goes long. So yeah, both players have to consider that as well going to this matchup. Oh, he's going for the Twilight Drakes. I believe he is going to silence Sylvanas. Um, the other obvious play was that silence Sylvanas, attack into the Sludge Belcher, and then Shadow Flame. But losing the Giant is is always painful. But this is uh, really a brawlable board. Like he's just saying, "Hey, there is no brawl," or he wants to bait out the brawl so that later in the game he will be able to play um, a lot of minions and overextend. It's unlikely that people are playing double brawl. I don't think you have to brawl yet, though. Like, there's still a very good way for you to deal with this board. Um, just armoring up and shield slamming the Drake, running something into it, running your Sylvanas into the uh, Mountain Giant, and then killing off the RMB Gal. I think that's actually quite good. Yeah, I like it. I think, like, keeping your brawl, brawl is a bit better. But then from Thais, I understand just overextending here to try to bait out the brawl. Or like, you know, asking the questions, like, hey, I have all those cool minions, can you answer them? Yeah. Also very key is that one of the reasons I believe Hyped made the Sylvanas play on turn 6 is because he wanted to bait out that silence. He sees he's already drawn the Ysera, and a lot of handlock decks these days, they don't run Siphon Soul at all. So they're really the only answer to Ysera is the RMB Gal. And if he's able to bait out the only RMB Gal in Tice's deck, or in Tice's hand, possibly his deck, then he can get a clear victory uh, in the following game. That's true. Alright, so he's going for Shield Slam, I believe. Or is he not Execute going for Shield Slam? Uh, viable. Oh wow, a second Iron Beak. Yeah, so a little unfortunate for Hyped. His uh, plan didn't go out too well. So being Tice, you're definitely not going for aggro, right? It's not like silencing your 4-5 makes sense. So many. Possibilities. Yeah, you in this matchup, you definitely want to save the owls uh, to use on your opponent's minions rather than to go for like four or fives. I have no Look how many decisions uh, Thais has. This is why a lot of people they love handlock, having so many cards every turn. Hmm, Torison. Shield slam Sylvanas and Torison. Torison is not being contested by a 4 9. Yeah, not bad, I'd say. And getting your Sarah down five to mana. 8 HP, or 8, yeah, 8 mana is always quite good. Getting a lot of free spells, too. But then a simple Defender of Argus is going to be enough to kill Torison. I don't know. It still looks weird for, for Hyped. It seems like he is fighting an uphill battle. Even though yeah, Tyus doesn't um, have many big minions in his hand, the buffs, the removal, silence, heal, like he has everything. 
Yeah, even though both these decks are lean towards more of the control -y style, um, Tempo is still involved in the game. And Hyped, unfortunately for him, he didn't get Emperor Thor's in last turn, and he couldn't develop a board in order to, for his opponent to respond with. So now Tice has the Tempo, and it might just be a little more difficult for him. All right, so Hype decides to keep the, um, the Shield Slam here. Um, Torison is, well, is still going to die. Hype will be fine with uh, with a five uh, with Savannah straight into it. If something else happens, it means there will be more minions, so maybe he will be able to cast that brawl. Another small minion for Tice. Yeah, uh, Tice doesn't actually have too many options. His hand. This is kind of like the typical handlock hand uh, in this matchup going into the later stages of the game. You have a lot of situational cards, but you kind of run out of your threats because you've already played them onto your board. Oh, look at that. I was that's just, actually... Right? Yeah, that's actually kind of awkward, though. Why is it? Wouldn't you like trading uh, Sylvanas into the 5-5 five five and then just playing Torison? Um, yeah, but... The problem there is, like, you have a Sylvanas on the board, and that's always going to be really good. Um, Tice is going to use this a defender, of, or he's going to use this his second RMB Gal. So now hyped, he's has a really great opportunity to win this game, just well, by using Brawl. Then, so then, um, Ysera, it's very likely for him to just uh, overrun his opponent with Dream cards, especially yeah. if he draws Ysera's Awakens as his first Dream card. But still, Tice has a lot of options, and uh, if Brawl actually misses, if Brawl um, leaves Sylvanas on board, he that'll be... just shield slam it. Okay. Alright, and uh, we're going to see the Brawl. What is going to survive? Iron Beak or Sylvanas? Maybe Ancient Watcher. Oh, it's going to be That Beak. bird. That was the strongest bird. Killed everything. So, uh, yeah, Monk, imagine that brawl, like, from the lore perspective. So, a dragon, an undead lady, an ancient watcher, and what was the and the defender of Argus goes into a battle. Who wins? Well, for, look at that. All those minions died. Well, from that perspective, it's just the owl that's perched on a tree, and he's just overlooking the battle, and he just sees everyone's dead, and, and he's the one that survives. Um, that was wise. So, wise owl. So, from... Just judging from these hands, I actually would have to give uh, Hype the advantage. He has the Acera, which can't get dealt with. He has the potential for Burst. And um, he still has a Nefarian left in the deck. Uh, can Tice contest the, the Acera here, by the way? With uh, You will have 9 power on board. That's not enough to kill Acera, I believe, even with the Dark Bomb. Yeah, especially so, after the Shield Slam that will undoubtedly come down on the Thorazin. Yeah. Wow, so Hype, got, Hype was really patient, and um, Ty's kind of overextended it at Brawl. Right now, Hype will have a chance to take back the game. And uh, this is the beauty of the control matchups, where instead of going for phase and being super fast, you do have those small decisions, and you have to play around those big cards. And with enough patience and planning, you are able to put yourself in a situation where you will get an advantage. And uh, most of those matchups, they're going to the last cards as well. We might see fatigue in this match. Uh, and if it's going to go to fatigue, it's usually from the handlock side, unless Hyped runs Harrison Jones, which I don't believe he does, no. judging from just all the big cards in his deck. He has to have, have cut something, and I would suspect Harrison Jones would be it. Imagine, Sarah comes down. imagine Sarah Awakening. Sarah Awakens, and he is able... Oh, he got it! He got it, Sarah Awakens! Wow, and you know what? That's actually just game over because there's no way for Tice to play around Nasera Awakens here. Yeah, he can't kill. He can't really kill Isera. But it's not game over next turn, right? It's like with Gromash and Isera Awakens, that's uh, 5, 10, 19 points of damage, assuming that Armor Armorsmith is going to die. So now the big question is. Is Tice going to kill Armorsmith? Well, Armorsmith is going to die anyway to Isar Awakens. Well, All right, so. uh, actually, I think it's game over unless Tice uses a heal bot right now. Because there's actually 17... 
Oh, there's not enough. There's 15 points of burst as an opponent in his opponent's hand. I guess if if Tice taps here or uses a Hellfire, he does, and he's going for yeah. the tap. All right, he's going for the top. So now we have 19 points of damage incoming. There is a Molten Giant though, not really able to use it. So that life tap killed Tice. Almost. Oh, well, well Healbot's gonna come down. Okay, so Healbot is actually saving him here. But still, it's Star Awakens is the play. Like even without Grimash, you don't have to play Grimash here. You just can play Star Awakens and Shield Maiden. Exactly. Just develop uh, an even stronger board, and and even it, this play doesn't even put your opponent down in range of Bolton Giants. Because of Healbot, so exactly. you're still in a good position, and you have Activator for Grimash. Sarah Awakens. That's an amazing art for Sarah, by the way, in human form. Oh, I never realized that that was Ysera in human form. Nimsh always with the uh, with the lore <laughs> aspect of Hearthstone. Bits and pieces. That art was used for original Ysera in uh, WoW TCG, the, the master hero. She was kind of like Jaraxxus, like you play her and then she becomes your hero. I'm pretty sad that we are having, in Hearthstone, we are uh, having dragons, dragon forms as the dragon cards. I would prefer to have like human form for Ysera, Alexstrasza, well, maybe, oh, even Deathwing. Deathwing human form is nice as well. So you basically, you want Ysera to be Jaraxxus. You want to play as Ysera. And you want your hero power to be draw a dream card. Yeah, that would be cool. Maybe a different, like, mechanics, but this way would be would be amazing, actually. Or you, like, the whole board changes into a dream board. And then cards, they change a bit. Like, they are maybe buffed, you know? Everything goes green. So many. Maybe in future, like in two years. So now for Thais. Uh, Thais is in a bad spot. There is this uh, Grimash with Taskmaster just waiting, which is also, lore-wise, it's a bit weird. Imagine like the Warchief of the Horde Grimash, and there's this small Taskmaster with the with the whip behind him. It's like, charge, charge, Warchief. Kill Thais. Yeah. yeah, especially Garrosh, right? Mm. Like, Garrosh in the lore, like, he's just like a big, big like, badass, right? Yeah, we and he's say, he, like he's saying we will never never be slaves. And then there's Taskmaster just behind him. It's like, come on, slave, just charge. All right. So with BGH here, is it enough? Uh yeah, it's lethal here because of the free execute. Yeah. So is Sarah attacking to the eight for execute? Then Grimash, twelve damage, seventeen total. Pretty yeah, impressive finish. Yeah, what's really funny here is Hyped had the BGH in his hand the entire game. He yeah. never used it, and he still won. Just based off of that excellent brawl, and Ysera just being just dominating. I said in the, begin in the beginning of the game that I collided paint was necessary for uh, for Hyped to take a win. But actually, Hyped, he never drew Acolyte of Pain in the first few turns, and he still won just because of the excellent value he got off of cards like the brawl and the Ysera. Yeah, the Sarah Awakens was uh, amazing there, the brawl, and uh, the fact that he saved the brawl, and when he had an opportunity to kill Sylvanas and Twilight Drake, he actually used other cards and uh, baited Tys into overextending. So, uh, an excellent play, Tys uh, having lead 2-1 to one versus, uh, Hyped having lead versus Tys 2-1, to one. and now um, Hyped only needs to win with that Warrior, I believe, right? He has the Control, war control Dragon uh, he, War. Wait, no, he won he, with Warrior. He has Headlock left. Yes, so Headlock. We might even see a handlock mirror. And Tice is a player who's very known for playing handlock. Um, especially the whole team of Nylum is known for handlock. Life coach, of course, and Tice being two of the most prominent handlock players in the scene. Hype to Moonwall, we know he's kind of a new handlock player. So it'll be interesting to see who can get the best out of that matchup. Handlock new versus handlock. Versus old blood. Yeah, it's it's a very skill intensive matchup as well. So that might even come down to it. The experience might be what Tice needs to bring out the victory. I love Handlock versus Handlock. It's so interesting and so fun to play because you have to know exactly what cards are key cards. One of the best cards is Shadow Flame. Uh, you have to know when to go for face, when to enable the Giants, where to not enable the Giants, how to play Lothab. It's like, because Shadow Flame is so important, you will not want to give a good Shadow Flame to your opponent, but you maybe can if you have Lothab to block that Shadow Flame on the same turn. 
So it's kind of like chess, you know, it's like uh, move after move. Like you play the Giant, they maybe have the BGH. You play Twilight Drake, they maybe have the Iron Beak. And uh, what is going to happen there? So a, a very intense and uh, skill-intense matchup. I would love to see them, those, those specific players, uh, play it. But then uh, Tice still has, what, a Green Patron Warrior, I believe? Yeah, and even if Tice wins the, the Handlock Mirror, he's going to kind of struggle with the Grim Patron Warrior against his opponent's Handlock. And there we see it again, Handlock versus Handlock. And it's going to be... Uh, Hyped certainly has the better opening hand with uh, Mountain Giant already in his hand. Definitely like one of the key cards in this matchup. Probably nothing is better than Mountain Giant in your opening hand. Yeah, you definitely want that Mountain Giant, uh, even better than BGH, because your opponent might not have that BGH, and with Simple Giant, you're going to take over the control uh, here. Uh, in the past, people were playing the um, Faceless Manipulator, which was able to, which was an, like another card like BGH, to kind of counter the Mountain Giant, but uh, if you don't have it, if you only have the BGH, it's uh, Twilight Drake into Mountain Giant, it's not something you really want to play. Um, we also saw most of Tice's handlock deck in the previous game, and we saw that it was very uh, not very threat dense. So that might come into the into effect as well. Hyped might be running a greedier handlock, and if he indeed is, that could just swing the game entirely. If Hyped has one more threat than his opponent, and it goes to late game, then Ty Hyped will have a huge advantage. And we can definitely see even Ragnaros in Hyped's deck. Yeah, that's actually going to be huge. Talking about threats, Ragnaros is amazing, and uh. It is a great threat, especially with no Siphon Souls for, for Tice. And that's that's not 8-8, eight, eight, right? So if you use your BGH, it might get tough. So in the beginning, it's mostly like tap, tap, tap. You, you want to get as many cards as possible for those key turns when uh, the minion trading and removal uh, comes into play. There is a BGH for Tice. Out of that, Tice's hand is not great. Uh, Mortal Coils, not that useful. Twilight Drake is all right. You want to play it, but he is looking for Giants. He's looking for another Twilight Drake. Oh, this hand is so awkward now for Tice. The, the problem with being player two as the handlock player is that oftentimes you actually have to... You ha kind of have to skip your turn three. Um, so he Tice at this the point... Twilight. Yeah, he can either coin the Twilight, um, or just give up this turn, or switch his uh, coin for the Life Tap. The problem with coining Twilight is that a Mountain Giant can test that, but the problem with that is that Tice does have the BGH, so I think Tice actually feels somewhat comfortable with this play, even though normally it would get hard countered by a Mountain Giant. Yeah, and uh, that's because as uh, 8 points of health as opposed to playing it on turn 4, what it will have like 9 points of health. So it's kind of like forcing the giant here into the BGH. Uh, smart play. Like I think there was nothing against that. Is Tice trying to simulate that he has a Twilight Drake as well? Because he was um, pointing at Ragnaros. To, I mean, hyped was uh, just trying to play Ragnaros, kind of suggesting that hey, I have a choice. I might play something else than that giant. Maybe he was uh, trying to fake out a uh, perhaps. An Iron Beak Gal plus Mortal Coil. That's also a very good answer to Twilight Drake. Yeah. Oh, there is an Iron Beak actually. Yeah, no but Mortal Coil. Yeah, and without Mortal Coil, uh, just using Iron Beak plus Dark Bomb is kind of awkward here. Um, the very obvious play here is Sludge Belcher, but that kind of gets really wrecked by a, a Defender of Argus play. I think Iron Beak Dark Bomb. Iron Beak Dark Bomb is actually good because then the Iron Beak contests the the four two. So you not only kill the Twilight Drake, you also contest uh, the the remaining minion on board. Well, wouldn't you um, Dark Bomb the BGH in that scenario? Well, Life Top Mountain Giant might be better, and oh, we Dark Bomb the BGH. Yeah. Well, if if you silence yeah. the Twilight Drake, then you would Dark Bomb the BGH because yeah, it's true, a true, true, because it's a four two. Yeah. It, it obviously it's better because then you can Mortal Coil Twilight Drake maybe if you get the Coil next turn. Yeah. Um. Oh, I I didn't even notice this Mountain Giant in Hype's hand it's sitting all the way at the end. No, no, no. He just draw. He, he just drew into it. Oh, he, he just tapped, drew. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, he tapped into the Giant. Uh, the problem with the Giant is that it dies to both of those minions. Yeah. 
can always play it in the next turn. So now the giant from Tice, and he was able to just get both those threats on board. He might be considering Sludge Belcher as well, but uh, I don't see a reason not to play the giant. Like even if there is a BGH, BGH locks most of the of the mana. Oh wow, there is a coil. So now he can play the giant into the giant. He can Iron Beak and coil. After that. That's that seems pretty good. Just a very efficient play, dealing with, kind of dealing with both the threats on the board. And also, Tyus will not be able to attack face, uh, in case of the of the molten giants. What wow. Does he draw? A mol oh. a second molten giant. All right. So unless Tyus draws into perhaps like a shadow flame, it'll definitely be a big mistake to attack face here. Yeah, but even if he doesn't get the Shadow Flame, then Hype has to think about Shadow Flame, right? So if um, if Tice goes for face, Hype will not be able to play both Maltons. Yeah, it might seem like Tice is in the lead with more health, but actually Hype actually has somewhat of an advantage here by having less health and by being the first player that can possibly activate a Molten Giant. Yeah. Oh wow, Hellfire. So with Hellfire, he will be able to play uh, like Hellfire, Molten Giant, and uh, I really like it. Yeah, you can even consider tapping uh, to get a one more card in exchange for two health and still play the Molten Giant. Will he burn? No, he has nine cards. So you tap, you get to five. You, um, yeah, I like it as well. Perfect. Very powerful turn. Yeah, and, and then, then you have that, the Cuba. Exactly, and then on the next turn you can play uh, a f almost a free Molten Giant and then heal that up. It seems pretty good to me. Especially because there is no way to, to answer that Molten Giant from, from Tice. So if, if Hype sees that, hey, my Molten Giant was not answered... Oh, there's a Siphon Soul. Like, yeah, Hype was actually playing it. I forgot. And that Siphon Soul is super important in this matchup. Yeah, it's just... One extra answer to one of your opponent's creatures. Yeah, look at this. Really great. Tice it, can't can answer this Molten. You can definitely see that Hyped has an advantage in this matchup. Not only does he have an extra Siphon Soul, but he has an extra Ragnaros. So those are two great cards in this matchup that Tice doesn't have. So many possibilities. Instead, he's running double Defender of, uh, of Argus, which is a card that's not that great in the matchup, to be honest. All right, but it's getting dangerous because right now Hype has to think about Burst as well. There is a Hellfire, there is a Dark Bomb, that's six points of damage. So right now Hyped is kind of on five. In case of, let's say, Sludge Belcher attacking, or maybe even if the 1-2 survives after after the Molten Giant attack and ties top decks and Iron Big Owl, he will have exactly 11 points of damage. Right? Yeah. With the with the one two, with the four five being four five being silenced, and then six points of damage from hand, eight mana to do everything he wants. Yeah, I suspect we'll see some kind of taunt or heal play this turn though. It's yeah, I think heal certain. is the Exactly. Now Hyped is uh kind of deciding whether he wants to play this Molten Giant here. Because there's still the possibility of a Mountain Giant plus Shadow Flame combo. But I'm not sure if uh, he can play around that. And he actually, oh, he does play around that with a Lothab. So this yeah. is pretty good. I'll, I even love it. setting up lethal at this point. Yeah, this is the thing. Like, um, this is exactly what I mentioned at the beginning. If you are able to set up a board uh, being lower with those Molten Giants and stop the Shadow Flame. Oh, by the way, there's, that's an Iron Beak. So if you would not kill the 1 2, he was dead. Uh, well, without Lothab as well. <laughs> it was very close there. If you would go for like Dr. Boom and Molten Giant, and just attack into that Sludge Belcher, that game was over. Yeah, exactly. Now, but, um, yeah, I think the there's a very obvious play here with the Iron Beak plus Defender of Argus to kill off the Lothab, but then you have to consider, do you want to tap here or not? Because you do have a two extra, um, two extra mana. I think you do tap, though, because you don't have any way to deal with the current board 
um, the two Molten Giants with your current hand. So you need to tap for like a, perhaps a Siphon Soul if he runs it, perhaps a second BGH or something like a Molten or Mountain Giant plus Shadow Flame combo. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you said, Tice is going for the Defender of Argus uh, Silence play to deal with the Lothab. And uh, for Hyped, this will mean... Oh, is he going for face here? He's going for the burst. He sees the opportunity. He takes the risk. There is a Hellfire. There's Dark, Dark Bomb for him. So Ty is just uh, leaning back and yeah, saying, he's... please, no heal bot. Exactly. He sees... Uh, I, I like this play because he sees that he has no way to deal with these giants, even if he draws into the perfect answer next turn. Like, even if he draws into a second BGH, which he might not even run, I there's still an extra giant. Even if he draws yeah. into a Shadow Flame, he doesn't have anything under Shadow Flame. True. So he's he needs to win on the next turn, essentially. But this is also a clear sign for Hyped. It's like, hey, I can't deal with your stuff. I have Burst. So right now, Hyped only has to think how to play it safe. So many possible. I just Unless say, he, play... he spots lethal here, but I don't yeah. think there is... Yeah, you just have to play as defensively as possible. I would like the anti kill bot plus the sludge, sludge belcher is about mm. as safe as you can get. Uh, but you only have nine mana, so you can decide on one. That's uh, uh, that's true. a bit awkward there. So well, then I would say definitely the the anti kill bot because six HP is so precarious with the handlock having so many spells that deal three damage. Well, you have to clear the board. That's for sure. So clear the board and play the heal bots. If he yeah, doesn't, I, I definitely like that sequence of attacks because two HP and three HP actually doesn't matter. Oh my god! Type oh my ropes. god! He got roped. He oh never my played the heal god! Bot. This means Ty is going to take the game, even though Hype had it in the bag. Oh my god! That's APM so unfortunate. On. Yeah, I guess APM is a thing, and unfortunately for Hyped, he kind of throws away that game. I feel like actually so sorry for him, because it was like one of his first games as Handlock. He had it in the bag, but he just couldn't execute his plays fast enough. He couldn't decide to use that heal bot fast enough. Oh man, I'm, I'm stunned, because, you know, the play that Tice did and prepared the burn for the kill, it made Hype think so much about what is going to happen. What are the possibilities? Am I dead? And Hype decided to make a correct decision in the end to go with, with that uh, heal bot. Like, clear the board and uh, and play heal bot, but then he didn't have enough time to execute everything. Yeah, uh, Hype is clearly tilted at this point, and we might even see uh, Hype making even more misplays in the future because he is definitely on some huge tilt. Yeah, but um, honestly, it is really stressful uh, playing those kinds of decks if you are not that accustomed to, to playing it. And uh, you have to think about so many things in this matchup that you are getting stressed. Like a lot of people are saying, hey, he's just playing cards at his home, just uh, his own computer. Why is it stressful? It's not stressful. It's just playing the game, right? But it is yeah. really stressful. Yeah, Hyped is also not a player known for roping. I mean, there are players like Life Coach, obviously known for roping. Um, Raynad, in the beginning of uh, Hearthstone, back in the BGVN tournaments, he was known for roping. But Hyped, he's, I don't believe he's ever roped before. Well, this is for sure one of the first times I'm seeing him roped um, in one of those, you know, premier tournaments. All right. So we have Warrior, Green Patron Warrior versus Handlock. This game is going to decide the match. Game number five. What's this matchup, Mon? Who has an edge here? Oh, I would say definitely the Handlock because they have so many AoEs that just deal exactly three damage in order to get rid of patrons. Not only that, but they have these big creatures that Grim Patron Warrior really fails to deal with. Grim Patron is one of the only like one of the only decks in the metagame that's not an aggro deck and doesn't run BGH. So it, it has a lot of problems dealing with giants. It even has problems dealing with Twilight Drakes. Normal control warrior. They have Execute, Shield Slams, BGH, possibly RNB Gal. But Tice in his Grim Patron deck, he only runs two Executes. And those big minions behind Taunts um, are taunted up, rather. They're just really impossible for the the Grim Patron Warrior to deal with, usually. Yeah, so Handlock can dismantle the strategy, even if um, 
if Green Patron is going to draw all the cards, we've seen that before with Ecop, I believe. He got all the cards he drew to the, to, to the last card, and he still didn't have enough to finish the game because Handlock was just dismantling all the threats. And uh, right now, we already see that Tys will have to passively use that execute, and that's uh, the only execute in his hand. And then there will be another uh, Twilight Drake. So Hype just has to play carefully, just set up those drakes, set up the Sludge Belcher, then uh, draw into, may like maybe even Torison being uncontested will be huge here for, for Hyped. I'd see uh, probably another Twilight Drake coming down here. He can play the Lothab, but I don't think it's, it's, okay. Just limiting the amount of options that Tice has. I guess uh, if you play the Lothab on curve here, you can fit in two extra mana on your next turn. So this kind of makes sense as well. Yeah. Another execute. Oh. Tice drawing so well. So do you set up a Death Spite here? Or is there anything else? Let's see. It's like Death Spite. Yep. Most of the time, uh, when I'm seeing Green Patron, and if there is, if Death Spite is green, I'm thinking, yeah, <laughs> it's like you have to play Death Spite. Yeah, it's it's kind of the activator for all your combos, right? You just, it's it's so good because you basically have a combo that's like nine mana, but you get to use your Death Spite on the previous turn. Okay, so um, Tice was able to dismantle another minion from from Hyped, and now Hyped has to think. While with the play, uh, Torison is getting killed by the weapon. But then again, Torison is, is such an amazing card, not only forcing uh, Tice to kill it uh, and take five damage to face, but also giving hyped how much mana? Three, six, eight points of mana. That's a huge wild growth. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so even if you play the Twilight Drake, for instance, you still don't have anything else to fill up that mana with, so I definitely like this play. Um, especially also because he has a lot of answers in his hand, so if uh, Tice goes for a big Grim Patron play, he still has uh, exactly what he needs to deal with everything. Yeah. Well, Tice just going for the for the Torison here and drawing one card from Acolyte. Just taking, taking his time, you know, playing a chill. And I, I'm looking at that Hellfire in Hype's hand, and the card is so good. Like, Tice, at some point in this game, Tice will have to bait out the Hellfire. Like, he will have to have a board where Hellfire is forced. And then after that, he follows up with another board that will be, um, again, like, very very bad versus Hellfire. But hopefully there will be no second one. Unfortunately, most handlock decks these days, they run double Hellfire. And even some of them, they run double Shadow Flame in addition to double Hellfire. So just a lot of hate against so the uh, as against the Grim Patron Warrior, which is regarded as pretty much the best deck in the metagame. True. Uh, so here, Hype could also go for Mortal Coil first on the Acolyte, but I guess like this turn was still such an amazing turn with uh, low mana cost. It's just good to draw first, just in case. Yeah, Dark it's Moon not like... Exactly, the only draw that might have made a difference might have been... Maybe a Mountain Giant, maybe... The second Twilight Drake was already used, so that's not an option. So this game will mostly come down to how tilted Hyped is, and is it going to influence his play with the Handlock? Because he has uh, advantage, even though Tice has all the cards in the world. So the way for Tice to win here, I believe, is uh, try to OTK with Frotting. Just maybe... A just bait all the removal cards, uh, if possible, from, from Hyped. Get him low enough. Um, avoid Molten Giants, and then OTK with Frotting and yeah. uh, Warsong. Uh, against a lot of decks, you have multiple win conditions. Like, for example, as the Grim Patron Warrior, you often have uh, Bursting with Frothing, Bursting with Grom, and setting up a huge Grim Patron uh, board. Like, against Druid, for example. If you can set up a huge Grim Patron board, and it'd pretty much be impossible for the Druid to stop. But against Handlock, you have to assume they have lots of AoEs. So that's not really an option for you. Probably one of the key reasons why uh, Patrons, or rather why Handlock is being used in the metagame is because they're so good against Patron Warriors. For that exact reason. Yeah, that's certainly true. 
All right, so um, Ty is setting up a second Death Spide. Uh, he is missing that Warson Commander, though. One of the key cards in this matchup. So what is Hyped going to do here? Not really a threatening board. You can basically go for Ragnaros. So just yellow it. Right? Is he afraid of die? If there is there any threat that he's going to die here? Let's say if there is... Um, he knows that next turn Ties will have 9 mana because of coin. So let's say if there's a green patron and the war song will wins in a rage. Oh, I guess it's it's always possible that you're going to die. Yeah, I, 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 I like this play, just putting up as many taunts as possible, basically. And I just want to note that um, Hyped actually got rid of his slime because that's actually a detriment to you. You don't want slimes on the board because they just feed green patrons and potentially they feed frothing berserkers as well. Yeah. But this only shows how dangerous um, the Green Patron deck is. Imagine if there will be a, a War Song into Green Patron, Whirlwinds, Inner Rage, Coin, maybe an Outer Whirlwinds, um, and then there is the Death Spite Wilson line. That will be so much damage incoming. And you have to account for the damage with so many cards in hand. But now uh, Tyus doesn't have that War Song, so he is in, a, in an awkward spot. But you know what? He actually has exactly the card that he needs right now. He has the Emperor Thorzane, and not only that, but he has a Patron and two Frothing Berserkers in his hand. So he can actually deal with this board fairly effectively, uh, execute uh, Whirlwind plus the uh, Death Spite, and then just throw down a Grim Patron, or rather th throw down an Emperor Person. Thorzane on yeah. an empty board. Then he enables his combo so much, and it's exactly what he needs to win. Yeah, but then again, he has to, he had to use double Whirlwind effect. So he is getting all those combo cards getting cheaper, yeah. but he lost all the whirling effects, and the only card draw he has is that uh, Nimsh Inventor. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you're right, because all four whirlwind effects, or five whirlwind effects, have been used this game. Two whirlwinds, one unstable ghoul, and both death spites have been used. Yeah. So the only one remaining is perhaps a second unstable ghoul. Yeah, and there's, uh, I believe, double Taskmaster still, but. Um, he needs to draw it first, and he still doesn't has uh, doesn't have the war song, so no charge for those minions except for Grimash. I think this turn is just going to be a dark bomb Ragnaros turn. No yeah, other that's, threats. That's and a super you, powerful turn. Exactly. You've seen both execute, so this uh, Ragnaros. I don't think there's actually any good way of dealing with this Ragnaros short of running a Grom into it. And you still have to activate the Grom. Oh, he got an activator. Which is still not the best. Just um, wait. If he plays, okay, he has the, the coin. All right. So coin Grimash in a rage, I guess. Unless you spawn the board with minions, uh, like swarm the board. It is also one of the valid strategies. But then we know there is uh, Hellfire, double Hellfire actually. So if Thais decides to keep his Grimash, if he decides that Grimash is his only way to win this game. He is going to die next turn. Yeah, it's not looking that great for Tice right now. But you know what? If Tice does run a Grom into this Ragnaros, it actually might be dangerous for Hyped because he actually doesn't have any more threats. He only has answers. So he might just lose tempo. And if Tice is able to draw into a Warsong Commander or a Battle Rage, for instance, to cycle even more, it could be in Tice's advantage. This is exciting, Monk. What is going to happen? We're going to see Grimash charging into Ragnaros. Ta Hyped needs something. He needs a big minion. That's a minion. That's a small minion. It's still good. It's like healing 8. Right now, board is not threatening at all. Oh, he's going to cycle the Mortal Coil. Drawing into... Into a Dark Bomb, wow. Okay, so... Um, 
There is that heal bot on board, and uh, Tys is getting lower with attack. That will be four, I believe, six points of damage, and uh, that will be it. So, with the Dark Bomb and Hellfire, Hyped will be able to finish this game versus Tice. Three to two. What a series! And Monk is back, I believe. Wow, what a great end to this series. Hyped actually. He won this match, and I think if he didn't, he would have never forgiven himself because it was a very, a very clear win for him in the handlock mirror. So I guess it's at least fitting for him that he at least won game five. Oh yeah, and uh, right now he's going to advance to our top four. He will be able to face Forsen, and uh, but next I will have for you Tides of Time versus RDU. So Ty's teammate from Nihilum RDU versus Colentos and my own teammate Tides of Time from Cloud9 are going to be up next. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after a short break. <laughs> 